Yo, yo, what up? YouTube, knowledge and self-determination. So, today I wanted to make this video. By the way, shout out to all my subs. Thank you for subbing to my channel and listening to the things that I have to say. And pro quite possibly agreeing with the things that I have to say too. So I just want to give a shout out to all my subs. Thank you for subbing to my channel. Stay tuned. I've been busy, but I have a lot more coming. Um... Mine is always working, and there's always something that needs to be talked about. Anyway, um, so I wanted to talk about the Wu-Tang documentary on Showtime. Um, I like the documentary. I'm going to just come right off and say it. Uh, I think what I saw was the first part of the documentary. I think there's more to come. Um, but I think the documentary was dope, man. It would have been nice if ODB was, was alive, you know what I'm saying, to be a part of that. But uh, yeah, man. I, I think the, I think the documentary was dope. There were there were a lot of things in the document. Well, there were a lot of things in the documentary that I did not know about, and it and it actually helped shed a light on a lot of those things that I didn't know. Now for you, now I don't know if there shouldn't be anybody in the world who is a fan of hip hop. I should say, who does not know who the Wu Tang Clan is. They are, in my opinion the most successful hip hop group ever and nobody has done it as well as them since and I don't think anybody can or will because not only were they a, a powerhouse of a group individually these dudes were strong you know what I'm saying individually these dudes had their own skill and could carry their own weight you know what I'm saying like you know what I mean I, uh, like for instance my favorite MC's from the Wu-Tang the jizza simply and this isn't in any order from descending or ascending order or whatever it's just who comes to my head like the jizza i like the jizza the the uh basic instructions before you leave earth that's that is my favorite jizza song it, it's deep as fuck you know what i'm saying i fuck with the jizza because his rhymes are always very intelligent um raekwon one of the illest MCs, you know what I'm saying, from the Wu-Tang Clan. That fucking Only Built for Cuban Links album was the fucking shit. I like Ghostface, too. I like Ghostface. Um, it, damn, what the... I can't even remember the... I can't even remember the name of Ghostface for a solo album. Pardon me. Um, was it Fish Scale? I'm not sure. I, I can't... Pardon me. But the Only Built for Cuban Links, these are my favorite Wu-Tang albums. Method Man solo album. ODB's solo album, his they, 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 their first albums, um, Raekwon's first album, Only Built for Cuban Links, the 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 Liquid Swords album, and the Cabadonna album. I can't remember his first album, but Cabadonna is another one of my favorite Wu Tang MCs. You know, even though I like them all as a group together, the Wu Tang Forever album with the double CD album was fucking dope. You know what I'm saying? In fact, I remember. The first time I heard the Wu Tang Clan, I remember the first time I saw the video. It was the mystery of chess boxing, man. I'll never forget that shit. I was like, I was going to fucking St. Catharines, man. I was like, fucking 12, 13 years old, right? And I was at my grandfather's house. And I remember this shit because I got in a fight with my cousin. And that bitch fucking dug her claws in my face. I still got a fucking scar on my face to this day. From fighting that bitch. Fucking Monique. But anyway, got in a fight with her that day. But that was the first time that I saw the Mystery of the Chess, chess Boxing video. The first time that I heard a Wu Tang song. And I'm gonna tell you, man, when I heard that shit, I was fucking entranced. Like, like real talk. That, it, it was the dopest shit I had ever seen in my life. Dudes with the two way masks on, you can't see their faces and all that shit. Doing the rap song on a big ass chessboard. And everybody's even dressed in black and white or white and black. You know, man, that shit was fucking dope to me, man. I mean, when you look at it now, it's low budget as fuck compared to today's standards, but that was the dopest shit I'd ever seen at 12 years old. <coughs> Excuse me. And from that day forward, not only was that song etched in my mind, but that fucking scar was etched on my face forever. <coughs> fucking bitch. Uh, anyway, this bitch is added to all the, the scars on my face and shit. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. So, 
Now, the first time, now, in the end of the 36 Chambers, I remember when I first got that album. I remember I was in a, um, I was in a Dodge effects real heavy. Um, I think the album was straight from the sewer. Uh, Ricky D. Row, you know what I said? Fucking Dodge effects, man. I used to love that group. They were ahead of their times, man. People weren't even ready for what the fuck they were doing. I think, I think, I mean, in, in all honesty, I think Dodge effects, the group, or at least their style would make a lot of money. Cause I mean, real talk. If you can listen to that fucking, that fucking numb nut future, say Tony Montana for three, four minutes on a fucking track, nonstop. If you can listen to that and actually still buy this motherfucker's music, you are not a true hip hop fan. You are a fucking idiot. Anyway, I'm sorry about that. Not really, but fuck it. I'll keep moving on. But Dodge Effects, that was my favorite album. I fucking memorized damn near every song on that album, man. And the kids in my class, in fact, I didn't come up on, in fact, I didn't come up on the Wu-Tang album until my first year of high school, St. Francis. Yes, Catholic Junior High School in high school. Yes, I, I did that shit. My first year at St. fucking Francis is when I came in, came upon that fucking album. Now, Mind you, all that summer, after I heard the uh, Mystery of Chess Boxing and shit, it was Wu-Tang everywhere, man. I'm listening to 88.9. It's uh, the Morgan Morgan State radio station in Baltimore. On said, I think it was Friday nights at 12 midnight, they used to um, play the underground hip-hop shit, man. All the shit that was new, underground shit, freestyle shit. They used to pay all the dopest shit, man. And that's when I first heard... Um, that's when I first heard the, uh, a lot of Wu-Tang shit, a lot of shit that... That a lot of motherfuckers haven't heard to this day. Anyway, Wu Tang had hit had hit the fucking streets like by they had taken the streets by storm, man. I traded my Dodge Effects album for a dubbed copy of Into the Thirty Six Chambers. I'll never forget that shit. I have no idea in twenty nineteen where the fuck that shit went, but I ultimately upgraded to the CD. But I traded the homie Sean. My Dies Effects LP for a dub copy of the Wu Tang, and it just had Wu Tang written on the front of it. You know what I'm saying? It was a it was a Ma it was a Maxwell tape. You feel me? Like <laughs> I didn't even know if it was the actual tape itself, but I, I I traded homeboy for that shit, and I listened to that motherfucker every day, all day until I memorized every fucking song on that album, man. Every song. So I'm making this short video. To first off, give Showtime big ups for you know what I'm saying. Even you know for for for, for recognizing the greatness of Wu Tang, man. And it is a pretty dope documentary. You know they they go into a lot of stuff. You know, it, it really is a great documentary, man. And the kid Meth, the kid Meth got some bars, man. He had a little acapella freestyle that he was spitting. You know what I'm saying? That shit was kind of fire. You know what I'm saying? That shit was kind of fire. It, that that freestyle was a lot better than most of the shit you niggas paying money to hear right now. In all honesty, the Migos, I'm sorry, but that shit is fucking garbage, man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's something to be said for growing up in the golden age of hip-hop, man. The golden era of hip-hop. There's something to be said for that, man. Because that's when hip-hop was at its finest. When you had a plethora of artists that you could listen to. You know what I'm saying? Now... You got to pick and choose. Are you going to listen to that mumble rap crap? You know what I'm saying? Or are you going to listen to somebody hot like J. Cole be on a record with a mumble rap motherfucker? Like, y'all got too many shitty choices nowadays. I'm going to just say that, man. The game has changed. But anyway, shout out to Showtime. Shout out to the Wu. You know what I'm saying? All the surviving members of the Wu. You know. Oh, yeah. Killer Priest. Master Killer. These are other dudes who uh, were part of the Wu-Tang who I, who I like. I fuck with, too. But anyway... I just wanted to put that out there, man. Watch the Showtime. Uh, if you haven't already, check out Showtime and check out the Wu-Tang documentary, man. It's pretty dope. You know, yeah, I, I fucks with it, man. It, it, even though, you know, some of the stuff I knew, there were a lot of things that I didn't know, you know. And, yeah, man, it, it's uh, it's worth checking out. So, this is your boy, Knowledge of Self-Determination, signing off, and I'm out. Peace.